So, this particular uh, module we are going to discuss about uh, cylindrical cup deep drawing. Okay. So, this is a new model and then uh, let us see how to uh, develop some uh, expressions, equations for predicting certain things in deep drawing, sheet cup deep drawing. So, we are going to specifically discuss only about cylindrical cup deep drawing in this particular module. So, this uh, cylindrical cup deep drawing, uh, we already discussed this uh, briefly in the first chapter. Uh, this is how the process uh, will look like, this is schematic. Uh, you will see that, uh, so initially we have a flat sheet, initially we have a flat sheet like this and on top of that you are going to rest punch and uh, before uh, punch starts moving down, we have to clap the sheet on the die, okay, that will be done with the help of uh, a blank holder okay. and uh, we know that we have to give appropriate blank holding force. We know how to get blank holding force that we already discussed in the uh, stamping analysis. So, we have to give appropriate blank holding force so that the uh, inward movement of the sheet can happen uh, with some restriction due to the uh, contact friction between the sheet blank holder and the die. Okay. And uh, when the punch moves down, so you will see that basically the cup bottom is formed first. This is your cup bottom, we know that. This is your cup bottom that is going to form first. And uh, after that, if we see the entire process is all about converting the flange region into cup wall. So, this is your cup wall region that also we know already and this is your flange region of the cup. So, once a cup bottom is formed, that can form just uh, when the punch touches the uh, sheet, a little movement, maybe 1 mm movement itself is sufficient to create the cup bottom and after that your cup wall will form and that is going to happen due to the inward movement of this flange. So, it is all about converting a flange into your cup wall in this way. So, it is going to move like that and uh, the schematic shown here is a partially drawn cup that is why you have a cup wall and a flange region. Okay. If you uh, make the punch to move down further then the entire flange region will become a cup wall. Okay. So, and uh, previously uh, we have already discussed what is the uh, mode of deformation or maybe state of stress in the cup wall and in the flange region. We have discussed these two cases. Okay. So, uh, I am going to divide this deep drawing of circular cup. Okay. Deep drawing of circular cup can be viewed as two different process. Of course, these two happen continuously, but uh, you can view this as a two different operations or process. One is stretching sheet over a circular punch. That is what I was telling you initially that uh, the cup bottom is getting just get stretched below the punch and drawing an annulus inwards. So, drawing an annulus inwards is basically like uh, converting this uh, flange region into cup wall. So, you are pushing the, you are drawing the, this annulus region, annulus region means this entire, this diametrical region in the inward direction. Okay. And the cup wall is going to transmit force between these two regions. Cup wall is going to transmit force between these two regions. Okay. So, this is schematic, from the schematic and from this, uh, you know, view, we can in fact say that the deep drawing is nothing but drawing an annulus uh, inwards. And if you see a top view of this, okay, if you see the top view of this, that is what is given in the right side diagram, is a drawing of an annular flange, I have said. Okay. So, you will see that, uh, so this is your uh, outer radius of your, uh, that is R naught. Uh, this is, uh, you can say this is O, this is R naught. So, R naught is basically your initial radius of the sheet, you can say. Okay. And R i is basically the uh, inner radius. Okay, or you can also say this equivalent to punch radius. You can also say this as a punch radius or punch dimension you can say or you can also convert that into diameter and say punch diameter and outside diameter you can say sheet diameter. So, you can see that the punch is actually perpendicular to the plane of this diagram and it is moving downwards let us say okay, the sheet is actually getting a inward movement. So, this part is actually going to move inwards okay, so that it forms a cup. So, there has to be an appropriate diameter or radius of the sheet 
uh, because of which you can form a successful cup. Okay. So, larger the blank or smaller the bank may not be uh, sufficient okay, to make the actual cup which we want actually. Okay. So, we have to keep that in mind actually. So, if you see that we can uh, define this you know flange into maybe like three different locations I mentioned A, B and C. A at the edge of the flange, B somewhere in the middle and C in the die corner. C is in the die corner you can see here. So, this is your C, this is your B and this is your A you can say. Okay. So, I have located it here A, B, C uh, locations. These three locations are there in the entire flange region you can imagine. Okay. And uh, the state of stress in the A region and B region are mentioned here. This we already discussed in uh, other chapters. So, A region there is no sigma r here. Uh, so, sigma r is basically radial stress along the radial direction, along r direction, along r direction. Okay. By the way, r is basically any radius okay, in between your r i and r naught. Okay. So, you pick up an element let us say here this element blue color element which I mentioned it is at r radius from the axis. Okay. So, R can vary between R i and R naught you can imagine like that and let us go to this A. So, you will see that along the radial direction you will have sigma R that sigma R is missing here because it is at the edge of the flange sigma R will not be there at the edge of the flange. If you move inward direction somewhere in the middle region you will see that uh, you will have both sigma R acting in this direction and sigma theta is in the compression direction. Okay. So, uh, sigma theta is inward arrow mark I put which is basically compressing type and sigma r is going to be pulling type and uh, c would be at the your uh, die corner region. Okay. So, these three locations are important for us and uh, what I am going to do now is I am going to consider an element uh, in the flange region and we are going to apply force equilibrium. So, let us pick up an element in the flange region okay, and uh, I have already plotted all the you know stresses available in this uh, particular element, you can imagine that this element is basically this in this location. In this location you have this element let us say. So, now you will see that so this element has a radius of dr which is at r distance from the from the mid and uh, this uh, element subtends an angle of d theta okay, with respect to the, uh, the axis and you will see that there is one sigma r radial stress and there is one sigma theta which is a circumferential stress and uh, we know that at a, at a gap of dr distance let us say from this to this there will be some change in sigma r which you are going to call it as sigma r plus d sigma r. And uh, if you see from thickness direction, okay, so uh, the thickness direction though we say t naught as an initial thickness okay, during deep drawing you will see that uh, in the flange region okay, there will be slight thinning in the die corner somewhere here and there will be slight thickening in the edge of the flange t plus dt. Okay, that is why I mentioned it t plus dt so and here it is a t. So, these are the stresses on an element at radius r. Okay. So, this r is nothing but this r only. Okay. So, now what I am going to do is I am going to apply equilibrium for this element and if you do that you will get this particular equation you can look into it it is sigma r plus d sigma r for this one into t plus dt okay, that is the thickness here into r plus dr, r plus dr is this total radius of this into d theta that will be equal to you will take this sigma r, sigma r t r d theta and there will be one component of uh, sigma theta along r direction. So, that is going to be 2 sigma theta dr sin theta by 2 which can be written as sigma theta t dr d theta. You can uh, in a simplified way you can write this. So, basically sin d theta by 2 can be written as d theta by 2 and you can write it in this way sigma theta t dr d theta. Okay. And uh, of course, you can uh, simplify this further. So, I have not done it. So, you can one can do this if you do this it will reduce to one simple equation d sigma r by dr plus sigma r by t d theta by t minus the sigma theta minus sigma r divided by r equal to 0. Okay. So, and this is for a non strain hardening material okay. you do not consider strain hardening in this equation and it is a frictionless case. So, no effect of friction. 
okay, these two are not available in this equation. So, the first part basically tells it with radius how sigma r changes, the next part is going to tell you how t changes with r, we will come back to this okay, and then your sigma theta minus sigma r divided by r is equal to 0. So, we will come back to this equation now, how to uh, solve this, how to get basically our idea here is to get a sigma r. Okay. So, our idea is basically to get a sigma r which is nothing but your radial stress, that is the whole idea here. Okay. Because if you get sigma r by assuming any uh, yield criterion, we can get a sigma theta also okay. because these two are principal stresses, we can get sigma theta also. So, now before we come to this equation, okay, let us uh, get into some details of this ABC. This ABC point which we have shown here, A is at the edge, B is at the mid and C is at the die corner okay, covers the entire blank, uh, you know, flange region and these three points are actually shown in the yield locus in this way. Okay. So, uh, A point which is at the outermost edge of the flange, okay, we, we have said that sigma r is equal to 0, only sigma theta would be there, sigma r radial stress will end there, okay. it will not be there at all, it is going to be 0. Okay. So, that is why you will see that sigma r is 0 means it will fall in the x axis okay and uh, it will be on the second quadrant it is going to coincide with uh, x axis this point a okay and uh, we have already seen that at this location sheet will thicken at this point sheet will thicken at this point okay so uh, we have already seen this as an example okay and we also i think worked out uh, uh, your uh, you know why uh, sheet has thickened in fact the problem also one problem numerical problem we solved in the previous chapter also tells that Okay, if you follow this particular uh, mode of deformation, the sheet will have uh, thickened, would have thickened when compared to the previous, uh, its, its original thickness. So, you have to, you should know that at the edge location, at the outer edge, that is why we have said T plus uh, dt. Okay. So, you can write uh, uh, the state of stress sigma theta is nothing but minus sigma f, okay, which is known as uniaxial compression okay, and the sigma f is nothing but our current flow stress our current flow stress. Before reaching current flow stress, it would be uh, your initial flow stress or the uh, uh, yield stress. So, now when you go to point B, okay, so we have to pick up a point uh, B in such a way that basically we are picking up a point B in such a way that the radial stress is equal to opposite uh, to hoop stress. Okay. So, the radial stress your uh, uh, sigma r is equal to minus sigma theta. Okay. Your radial stress is actually sigma r which is equal to minus sigma theta, that is what we have said in this uh, point B. So, they are equal and opposite and uh, this will give your alpha as let us say minus 1, if alpha is minus 1 then you will see that uh, you can get a beta and uh, at this particular uh, mode of deformation you will see that there is no change in thickness at this point. Okay. If alpha is equal to minus 1, you can get a beta from levi meisers flow rule and uh, you will find out that there is no change in thickness at this particular point. So, now uh, when you go to point C, radial stress would be maximum at that location because that is basically a die corner region okay. and it is also expected that sheet thinning is going to happen in this location. Okay. So, I mentioned the C point somewhere here. Okay. So, this A, B, C points in the flange region is going to fall on the second quadrant A, which is going to be sigma theta is equal to minus sigma f, it is going to coincide with the x axis and you have opposite sign minus B, we are choosing in such a way that sigma r is equal and opposite to your sigma theta and uh, at uh, C location you will see that sigma r would be uh, maximum, radial stress would be maximum and here sheet thinning will happen. So, the edge you will have thickening and uh, at the somewhere in the mid location you will have uh, no change in thickness, so, so that means thickness strain is going to be 0 and uh, in the dike corner region you will have sheet thinning. So, that is the way these A, B, C points are actually you know characterized and you will also see that we have already mentioned this particular one in the, in the previous chapter that okay, so anything below this particular location, below this mode of deformation you will have thickening which is what is characterized here and beyond this in all other beta values you can see that it is going to thin down. So, which is basically at C location there is chances of thinning. So, at B basically is we are picking up B in such a way that these two are actually uh, equal and opposite. So, there will be no 
change in thickness. Okay. So, this can be compared, this particular characterization, this thickening and thinning which is mentioned here can be compared uh, with the previous discussion we had, similar diagram we have already discussed. Okay. So, all the stress states like this can be uh, represented in terms of, uh, let us say for example, a von Mises, uh, you know, yield locus like this. So, now let us go back to this equation. Okay. So, now uh, just for a change in this analysis, we are going to use a Tresca yield function, which is we have not used until now. We have used only von Mises yield function until now. If you use a Tresca yield function, this yield function is already derived in the previous chapter. So, sigma theta minus sigma is equal to minus sigma f naught minus sigma f naught is nothing but the initial flow stress, nothing but the initial flow stress. Okay. So, why we are saying that is because we are going to now replace this fellow by sigma f naught to get into some details. So, now what I am going to do is I am going to make one important assumption that by considering t is equal to t naught, by considering my t is equal to t naught. Okay. So, uh, what will happen now by considering t is equal to t naught? Okay, so, uh, we will say that in this uh, equation, this part will vanish, this part will go away. Okay, why? Because we are saying that there will be some change in thickness with respect to R value, okay, which is not the case here. We are saying that T is going to be equal to T naught, okay, which means a change in thickness is actually neglected in this equation. So, you have differential equation is nothing but this first term and this second term, first term and this second term. Okay. So, now what we are going to do is, so there is a small change in this equation, this equation uh, is not valid here. We are going to say that this equation d sigma r by dr, so d sigma r by dr, okay. this fellow goes, second term goes off okay. minus sigma theta minus sigma r divided by r, sigma theta minus sigma r divided by r equals to 0. Okay. So, if you want to integrate this equation okay, so uh, and by following this boundary condition. What is the boundary condition? We know that at uh, r naught, that means at the edge of this uh, flange region, we say sigma r is equal to 0. Right. So, and uh, another limit is basically this inner radius okay, at r is equal to r i, uh, at r is equal to r i, we are going to say that there is some radial stress that is sigma r is equal to sigma r i. Okay. So, if you see sigma r, how is it going to vary? It will be sigma r i here and it will be 0 here. So, it is going to vary between these two and uh, let us integrate this particular equation okay, by uh, taking t is equal to t naught and by applying this boundary condition, you will see that uh, uh, you will get a simple equation sigma r i will be equal to minus sigma f naught ln of r i by r naught. Sigma r i is equal to minus sigma f naught ln of r i by r naught. Okay. So, of course, uh, this can be written as sigma f naught ln of r naught by r i. Okay. And uh, because this equation is uh, known to us sigma theta minus sigma r is equal to minus sigma f naught. So, now I am going to substitute the sigma r i in this equation and get a sigma theta as minus sigma f naught minus sigma r i. Okay. So, you have to integrate this equation and not this. Let us forget this equation. Okay. This is not uh, not correct here. So, this equation we have to integrate by considering t is equal to t naught. So, there is a second term which goes off okay. and you will get sigma theta is equal to minus sigma f naught minus sigma r i. Okay. So, in this way for a non-strain hardening material, for a non-strain hardening material of course, without friction okay, the radial stress is given by sigma r i equation derived here okay. and radial stress will give you sigma theta by assuming one yield function. Here we are picking up Tresca yield function and we are getting it. Okay. So, now in this equation, you will see there is one important uh, uh, point which is what we are going to discuss in the next slide. Uh, we have already discussed briefly about drawing ratio. Drawing ratio means uh, basically it is initial diameter of the sheet divided by diameter of punch. Okay. So, drawing ratio is nothing but this called as dr equal. Okay. So, drawing ratio is nothing but initial diameter of the sheet divided by diameter of the punch and this draw ratio will give limiting draw ratio which we call LDR, limiting drawing ratio which we call LDR. Considering this diameter of punch as a constant, then what diameter, initial diameter of the sheet you can keep okay, to have a successful cup that will be decided by this LDR.
that will be decided by this LDR. So, which means in a way you see that it is R naught by R i, R naught is nothing but your uh, uh, radius of the sheet which is nothing but uh, diameter of the sheet divided by R i which is a inner uh, radius which is nothing but a punch diameter is going to give you some way it is going to define your LDR is going to define your LDR. So, we are going to put a condition now, we are going to put a condition now okay, which will give us some value of this LDR. What is that? We are going to say that the greatest stress in the cup wall that it can sustain for a material obeying Tresca is actually sigma f naught. So, in the cup wall if you see okay, the greatest stress the material can withstand if you follow Tresca yield function is actually sigma f naught itself. So, what we are going to say is in this equation if sigma r i is nothing but sigma f naught okay, okay, what will happen? Now, if sigma r i is equal to sigma f naught we get the largest blank that can be drawn which is also given by. So, this equation I am picking up which is was introduced to you before sigma r i is equal to minus sigma f naught ln of r i by r naught in this if I put sigma f naught you will see that by r naught by r i is going to be equal to 2.72 which is nothing but LDR is actually exponential 1 E 1. Okay. So, I am going to put a sigma f naught here and of course, uh, this minus can be taken care automatically. So, uh, you will get r naught by r i. So, r naught by r i would be uh, nothing but uh, exponential 1 which is nothing but 2.72. So, r naught by my r naught by r i which is nothing but uh, uh, in a way to describe uh, define LDR is nothing but 2.72 if you pick up an extreme case of uh, this particular one. Okay, the greatest stress the cup wall can withstand for a material it should not actually go to that level, but it is the greatest stress. Okay, if it goes to extreme then the LDR can be 2.72 that means, uh, that means what if R i is fixed suppose your punch radius or diameter of the punch is fixed you have to multiply it by 2.72 to get the initial diameter of the or initial radius of the sheet and only if you pick up that particular diameter you will get a successful cup. Okay. But as I said this particular value sigma r is equal to sigma f naught is too high and because of that what I am going to see is instead of this 1 I may slightly reduce it depending on my you know requirement I am going to say let us say LDR is nothing but exponential eta. Okay. And uh, if you take eta as let us say 0 0.7 let us say or 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, 0 0.6 to let us say 0 0.7 I get LDR of 2. That means uh, exponential let us say uh, instead of 1 you take exponential 0 0.69 or 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 you can take it will give you a value lesser than 2.72, 2.72 why because 2.72 is an extreme case. So, if you pick up an eta value of 0 0.69 you will get LDR of 2 which means that your R naught by your R naught by R i would be equal to 2. That means, if you take a R i let us say radius of the punch or diameter of the punch let us say you take radius diameter of the punch as 50 mm. Okay. So, then you multiply that with 2 the initial diameter of the sheet has to be about 100 mm or closer to that. Generally 0 0.6 to 0 0.7 you can pick up which will give you a range of LDR which is going to give you a successful drawn curve. So, through this uh, derivation simple uh, derivation uh, though it is for a non strain hardening material and frictionless case we derived expressions for sigma r radial stress and sigma theta okay, by assuming Tresca yield function this is the first time we are doing it in this in this course. Okay, and uh, if you put a condition for sigma r okay, which is nothing but if it is equal to sigma f naught then uh, you will get a limiting raw ratio as a, a particular value that is 2.72 and is an extreme case anything less than that would be better. So, if you take a eta of 0 0.7 or 0 0.6 in between values so you may get LDR of the order of 2 which is what is uh, you can refer to. This is the simplest way to calculate uh, your limit drawing ratio. So, now what we are going to do is uh, so, this equation has been obtained and from this equation we got sigma theta also. So, what we are going to do is we are going to modify this sigma r by considering uh, strain hardening effect and uh, uh, friction effect. Okay. So, modification of radial stress with the effect of strain hardening that is the next one. So, now what is going to happen is because of strain hardening we know that the flow stress will increase right the flow stress will increase and uh, if you pick up this flange region uh, if you pick up this 
uh, we will go to this diagram. If you pick up this particular flange region, okay, so you will see that at different locations you may get different levels of flow stress, okay, and it will be non-uniform. It will be non-uniform. So you can imagine that uh, uh, you know, like previously we discussed, you know, so uh, you can maybe like uh, you can put a lot of circle grids on the surface and. Uh, or maybe you can get uh, uh, strains at uh, you know different grids uh, and from there you can get a sigma bar from there you can get sigma 1 2 3 so all those things you can do in this flange also finally you will see that the flow stress is going to be get distributed in a non uniform way in the flange region so how are you going to quantify it is by taking an average flow stress uh, in the entire flange region so which means you can imagine that from the uh, in the strain evolution you can get maybe like epsilon bar and from there uh, by using some flow stress model you can get some sigma bar and you can just take an average value you will get some average value of uh, your flow stress in the whole flange. Now what I am going to do is this is uh, my original equation I am going to just modify the sigma f naught by sigma f I am just saying average okay. So which is what going to give me sigma ri is equal to sigma f average ln of okay of course this is inversed actually R i by R naught becomes R naught by R naught by R i and since I am going to update my sigma f okay, by using this sigma f average I am going to use R instead of R naught where R naught is my initial uh, you know outer radius right. So that will get updated depending on what average flow stress I am going to take so I am going to put R. Okay. So that diagram is shown here you can see. Uh, this is just a simple schematic this is one section of uh, you know flange which is showing the movement flange movement in the drawing you will see that uh, initially the flange region is up to this black part so which is actually r naught okay and uh, after some height let us say height h okay after some flange let us say cup height uh, your yeah so your cup wall height as let us say h okay uh, the new radius is r so this this radius i am going to update it here that is one small change we are having so a simpler way to take uh, uh, strain hardening is to take an average flow stress value okay, uh, in the entire uh, flange region and that is going to change my equation to sigma r i equal to sigma f average ln of r by r i instead of r naught I am going to put r by r i. Okay. So now there are two things one is strain hardening okay. we expect that you know uh, once deep drawing happens once it started happening so flow stress will increase and hence you need a larger drawing force let us say or radial stress at the same time r is reducing at the same time you will see that the material required for drawing is also reducing because uh, more and more you push punch down more flange region is getting converted into your cup wall region right your cup wall this is your cup wall region okay more flange region gets converted into cup wall region so naturally r becomes smaller so these two together is going to create one particular pattern of your uh, evolution of sigma r which is what is given in this particular figure. So for a strain hardening sheet you will see that sigma r is uh, of course plotted with height uh, this height the height of cup no? it is plotted with sigma r you will see that uh, initially there is a, uh, an increment in the sigma r value in this way and it reaches a peak value here I represent it as a star and then in further uh, punch movement will actually increment in height will actually reduce the radial stress this is how a typical plot would be for a strain hardening material for a strain hardening suppose the material is not strain hardening at all then this uh, your uh, radial uh, the, your uh, radial stress would be larger at the starting itself because the flow stress will not get updated after that so naturally it will be higher at the starting itself that is how it will be but for a strain hardening material this is a typical uh, you know nature of uh, your uh, radial stress it will increase for some time and once you reach a peak value it is going to come down and these two factors your strain hardening and r becoming smaller together is going to determine this evolution. So this equation sigma r i is equal to minus sigma f naught ln of r i by r naught becomes this equation by considering an average flow stress in a way taking care of your strain hardening effect. Okay. So now how are we going to modify? this equation by including friction that is the next part. So when you speak about friction, so we are going to divide this further into two parts. One is effect on die radius, you can see that effect on die radius I have uh, 
mentioned this particular schematic which I uh, shown you just before and this particular location we are going to concentrate and that is actually zoomed in here. Okay. So, uh, you will say that uh, in this uh, the material is actually material is flowing this direction it is already given and uh, your sigma ri is acting in this direction which we just now seen and the sigma ri can be converted into sigma phi which is actually stress in the cup wall. Okay. So, stress in the cup wall is this, this is going to be your sigma phi, okay, sigma phi. So, sigma theta is circumferential, sigma r is radial and sigma phi is nothing but a cup wall radius, uh, stress in the cup wall, stress in the cup wall. Okay. So, uh, somehow this sigma r i and sigma theta can be connected and that can be done by this particular equation which we have already discussed. Uh, this was discussed in one of the previous chapters. We have derived this dt1 by t1 is equal to mu d theta and uh, uh, in fact, if you integrate it between two different points, uh, in between if you know the angular value, then you can integrate it and you can get uh, tension in the new location with respect to the original location. Okay, we derived an equation for this, we worked out a problem also in this. Okay, so, now the same thing can be uh, rewritten in this way, d sigma phi by sigma phi is equal to mu d phi and of course, you can integrate it finally, you will say that uh, sigma of phi would be equal to your sorry this is phi actually, this is phi, this is also phi. So, sigma of phi would be actually sigma r i exponential mu into pi by 2. Okay. So, the angle subtended angle is actually pi by 2 here. So, you will see that uh, uh, the coefficient of friction, Coulomb's coefficient of friction will come into the brackets. So, it will be same thing only mu is going to be coming here and pi by 2. So, you will see that uh, your sigma phi can be obtained if you know sigma r i exponential times mu pi by 2. Okay. So, which can be obtained from this simple equation. So, uh, this equation can be directly written Okay, without uh, doing all these calculations also you can directly come out this equation based on your tension also which you already derived. So, if sigma r i is known from the previous equation, so we can get sigma phi also using this particular equation. Okay. So, sigma r can be found out and uh, from this you can get a sigma theta which already done. So, from this you can also get a sigma phi radial stress, circumferential stress, now this is a cup wall stress, stress in the cup wall. So, that is this part. Okay. So, now we are going to this particular location between the blank holder and the die there is a, a flange region and that situation is shown here friction between the blank holder and the flange. Okay. That is actually zoomed in in this particular schematic. Uh, so, this schematic basically tells you that so this is your uh, part of the flange region you can imagine uh, this is part of your flange region. If you see this location it is somewhere here this location this location is what is actually zoomed in here. Okay. So, now what we are going to say is though in this analysis we have taken uh, t is equal to t naught so that there is no change in thickness, but originally in the schematic we have also shown that uh, there is some change in the thickness at the edge. Okay. At the edge of the flange you will see that at the edge of the flange here or at the edge of the flange here, you will see that there is some uh, thickening that is going to happen, which is that is why we said t plus dt. right? So, because of that, what we are going to say is, we are going to tell that this blank holding force, we are going to call it as B, is distributed around the edge of the flange as a line force. So, we are going to say that practically your blank holder is going to come down and hold the entire flange region. So, blank holder will have perfect surface contact with the flange region and flange region will have full surface contact with the die surface. That is how practically it works. But for modeling point of view, we are saying that there is a blank holding force B that is going to act as a line force on the edge of the sheet. Why? Because uh, uh, basically it is there is an inclined surface here as I shown here. So, this thickness here is larger than this thickness. Let us say this thickness is t, this thickness would be t plus dt here. Okay. And because of that, it is uh, quite acceptable to consider this blank holding force as a line force, but of value b by 2 pi r naught per unit length. So, b is a blank holding force. Okay. So, I am going to 
uh, put a line force that is b by 2 pi r naught per unit length b by 2 pi r naught per unit length i am going to put that here so that's why i plotted a downward arrow and then an upward arrow at both the surfaces okay so the material flow is going to happen like this so naturally your friction force is going to be opposing nature so i am going to write a friction force as mu b divided by 2 pi r naught here and uh, mu b divided by 2 pi r naught here so combinedly we can write 2 mu b divided by 2 pi r naught is a friction force the friction force on the flange per unit length around the edge again is given by 2 mu b divided by 2 pi r naught okay the same situation can also be represented by this uh, sigma okay which is acting at the edge of the flange which is nothing but uh, this 2 times mu b divided by 2 pi r naught into t into t okay so the same thing the friction force can be termed can be written as stress acting on the edge of the flange that is nothing but your sigma as this 2 2 will be cancelled anyway mu b divided by pi r naught t okay so i am going to write where t is my actually it is t plus dt okay but it is understood that it is actually thickness at the edge of the flange that is all so basically you have to use thickness at the edge of the flange here so i am just telling you that t plus dt for our explanation and t here that does not mean that you have to use that thickness so you can use thickness here so thickness at the edge of the flange thickness at the, the edge of the flange okay can be used here so mu b divided by pi t into r naught so I am going to say there is stress acting on the edge of the flange that means my sigma r at r is equal to r naught where is this diagram my sigma r at r is equal to r naught at this particular location okay is uh, given by this particular equation mu b divided by pi r naught t where t is a blank thickness. So now what I am going to do is uh, my initial sigma r i is actually modified to sigma r i okay uh, by considering an average flow stress by considering an average flow stress right so this is sigma r i so again this is also sigma r so i can add this part to this part to get the effect of friction into that equation so what i have done is here is we derived sigma r is equal to sigma of average ln of r by r i right so the above equation this equation i am going to modify like this so i am just going to add this part to this part so sigma r i is equal to sigma of average ln of r by r i plus mu b pi r t pi r t where r is actually the changing radius pi r t okay so now you will see that finally the sigma r okay which is nothing but the radial stress uh, has got some effect because of strain hardening and then you are also bringing up uh, your uh, coefficient of friction in a way lubrication effect friction effect into this uh, equation okay so this is the first level of sigma ri and this is the second level of sigma r from this i am going to get next sigma ri by considering effect of mu that is a third one sorry mu plus sigma f average both both this is the third one so three different ways we have done actually so now uh, this equation this equation you say is radial stress for a strain hardening material with effect of friction that way you can tell and uh, since uh, sigma r i is known to you you can get sigma phi also how do you get you can just uh, substitute it in this equation sigma r i you substitute here that means the entire sigma r is multiplied by exponential mu into pi by 2 to get the sigma phi which is what i have given as sigma phi is equal to this entire thing sigma f average ln of r by r i plus mu b by pi r t into exponential mu pi by 2 okay in that way you can modify this equation okay so what are the things we got we got sigma r then we got of course sigma theta the same sigma r can be used to get sigma theta also all right so you assume a tusca yield function so you substitute here so sigma r can be used this equation instead of this equation you use the letter equation to this to get sigma theta so what do we have found out is sigma r we found out sigma theta we found out and then sigma phi also we found out from all these equations so with the effect of strain hardening and friction so these are expressions for radial stress and cup wall stress including strain hardening effect and friction effect okay so now there is one coefficient 1 by eta i have included 
okay, multiply it one by eta just to take care of, it is like an amplification factor. Uh, so, some, you know, it is like an efficiency factor you can say to take care of any other approximation. Okay, like for example, uh, the sheet gets bent and unbent, right, the sheet gets bent and unbent. No? So, that is not considered here, for example, because of this bending, okay. So, initially it is a flat, then it is bent, then it is again unbent, so it becomes straight, right. Say for example, this is flat, it is bent here, then it is unbent to become straight, is not it. So, this type of effects uh, will also lead to some change in your uh, stress value. So, just to get, uh, you know, some efficiency factor, you can multiply it 1 by eta to take care of that changes, okay. So, this value can be, uh, you know, uh, can be, it is in our hand, we can decide it to uh, improve the accuracy of this uh, wall prediction. Okay. So, now uh, in this uh, last subsection of this, uh, in this discussion, uh, there is uh, going to be some relationship between this LDR, we are say, uh, LDR we said, right, what is LDR we have said that it has uh, R naught by Ri. Uh, so, there is some relationship between this LDR and the materials anisotropy, that is sheet anisotropy. So, what is the connection? So, that is what we are going to see more in a very uh, conceptual way, we are not going to derive much, rather what we are going to do is, uh, we are going to just to discuss that in a conceptual way. So, uh, from the previous uh, formula uh, equation we derived, this LDR actually depends on the average flow stress, we know that and the current thickness B and then maximum permissible value of wall stress, which is nothing but my sigma phi. Okay, average flow stress we said sigma f average we brought it together, current thickness is T, this is your B okay, and maximum permissible value of wall stress is sigma phi. Okay. So, there is a particular level of wall stress that is allowed when you do cup deep drawing, that is your sigma phi. Sigma phi is a stress in the cup wall, but there has to be a permissible limit. Okay. So, now let us discuss these points. If we neglect strain hardening during drawing, the maximum drawing stress will happen at the start of the drawing. This is what I was discussing with you before. If you do not consider strain hardening, then the simplest choice we have is drawing stress being maximum can be maximum at the start itself because your flow stress is not going to increase beyond that. Okay. It could be the effect of R becoming smaller only. Okay. Two opposing factors we discussed strain hardening and R becoming smaller. Now, strain hardening is not there means the effect of R radius becoming smaller, the material uh, you know, material required for drawing is reducing. So, or becoming smaller is the only thing which is going to determine. So, maximum drawing stress will be reached at the start itself. Now, you are going to put a condition. Wall stress to initiate that drawing. Suppose, if you want to initiate the wall stress, okay, what will you do? The simplest choice we have is sigma f is equal to y, which is becoming a constant, where y is our initial flow stress or yield strength, you can say. So, wall stress to initiate drawing or at the start of drawing, okay, the wall stress can be obtained by putting sigma f is equal to y, which is a constant in the previous equation. So, from the previous equation for wall stress, we can write, now wall stress, now wall stress is becoming, we are going to concentrate on cup wall now, rather than flange. Now, flange is being converted into a cup wall. So, now what is happening in the cup wall is the main thing now. So, sigma phi is nothing but 1 by eta sigma of average ln of r by r i plus mu b divided by pi r t into exponential mu pi by 2, right. So, what I am going to do is, I am going to put this condition into this equation, into this equation. So, this I am going to convert that into y. So, uh, I am going to say that general flow stress is going to become my yield stress and I am going to say that my sigma phi is nothing but 1 by eta into y times of ln of r naught by r i plus mu b divided by pi r naught t naught exponential mu pi by 2. Only thing is like I am going back to my original dimensions R naught, R naught and T naught here. R, because you know it is a start of the drawing, no. So, we are saying that the wall stress to initiate drawing. So, which means that I am going to modify this equation into this is R naught, this is R naught and this is T naught. Okay. So, uh, this sigma phi, this sigma phi, this sigma phi. Uh. So, in this equation, these are the modifications I am going to put. So, uh, this becomes y. Oh, my sigma phi is this becomes y, everything else remains same and uh, this related to original dimension. Okay. So, uh, now this wall stress has to be uh, less than the, uh, the load carrying capacity of the wall. So, wall has got a particular load carrying capacity, you know, 
you can imagine like that and uh, this sigma of i has to be less than that. And we have also seen before the cup wall actually follows plane strain mode of deformation. We have seen this example before in the uh, uh, when we discuss about the stress contour, strain contour like we have discussed OA, OB, OC, OD, OE mode of deformation. Okay. So, like this diagram you can see that we saw OB, OA, OB there are 5 different uh, you know uh, you know uh, we have seen 5 different you know stress paths we have seen. So, in that we have mentioned this as an example that uh, for a plane strain mode of deformation the cup wall is the best example. So, we have earlier seen that the deformation okay, in the cup wall follows in the cup wall follows plane strain mode okay, and the stress at it it would reach uh, deform depends on the choice of yield criterion okay, and the stress at which it would deform depends on the choice of yield criterion. Okay. So, uh, we know that uh, this uh, cup wall stress should be less than the load carrying capacity of the wall. Okay. If that is the case, okay, if that is the situation, then uh, your cup wall should deform in plane strain mode of deformation okay. and uh, it has to reach that particular value of stress and that depends on what choice of yield function you have. Okay, whether you choose Tresca or 1 minus or any anisotropic yield function, yield locus. So, it depends on that uh, yield locus which is going to tell you when that critical uh, you know uh, point is reached okay, for this uh, sigma phi, for this sigma phi. Okay. So, in that case we have uh, shown here 3 different choices for this. What are the three different choices? You can see that this is for representation of Tresca yield locus, this is your von Mises yield locus and this is some anisotropic yield locus. Okay. So, in Tresca yield locus you pick up OP. So, plane strain mode of deformation is actually OP. Okay. Plane strain mode of deformation in the cup. This is a loading path in the cup wall for various yield locus. Okay. Loci. Okay. This is a loading path. So, you are going in the flange region, this is the way your stress is going to evolve. So, it will start from O, it will reach P when yielding is going to start at y and you will see that sigma of phi would be of this value. So, same thing if you see from one minus yield function you start with o it will you will reach p okay, and uh, you will see that y you are it is going to reach y like this okay, and your sigma of phi would be this much value. Okay. And uh, if you pick up an anisotropic yield locus for which we are taking one particular case r greater than 1. Okay, or greater than 1. So, true width strain divided by true thickness strain is nothing but your r, no? This is r is equal to this. So, it should be greater than 1. Greater than 1 means what? So, greater than 1 means suppose like this ratio is 2, which means that you are uh, the material is stronger in the thickness direction than in the plane direction, in the plane surface, right? So, that is the meaning. So, if you pick up R is equal to 1, generally you will see that the yield locus gets elongated in the right hand diagonal. Okay. You, you can see the elongation in the right hand diagonal in this way and uh, other things are same. You have OP which will reach it in this particular location, your Y is here, this much would be your sigma phi, this much will be your sigma phi. Okay. So, this is what we were telling that the stress at which it would deform depends on the choice of yield criterion. So, when it is going to reach this particular point, this particular point, this particular point actually is decided by the choice of yield function you choose. So, now let us pick up all these three cases, we will discuss something which will tell us how this sheet anisotropy or the choice of yield locus changes the LDR calculation. So, Tresca yield locus it is pretty simple. Okay, For Tresca yield locus the cup wall stress would be equal to y. So, sigma phi is equal to y, we have seen this here. Your sigma phi would be equal to y only, the sigma phi would be equal to y. Okay. So, now this particular equation which you have just now, uh, we have shown this equation. Okay. We said that you know to initiate uh, your uh, drawing, okay. just to initiate drawing, okay. then you have to put sigma f is equal to y. Then uh, we have got y here, is not it? So, now what we are going to do is as per your Tresca yield function, we are going to say that sigma phi is nothing but y. So, this equation is modified to this form. Okay. So, you can say that uh, this sigma phi is nothing but y 
Okay. So, uh, then uh, eta can be taken here, y can come here, y can be taken inside. So, this y vanishes and uh, this y will come in the denominator of the second part. Okay. So, I am going to get eta is equal to ln of r naught by r i plus mu b divided by pi r naught t naught, y will come the denominator exponential mu pi by 2. So, this is the condition for maximum sheet size. This is the condition for your maximum sheet size. So, suppose if you use 1 minus e locus, okay, then we have already know this particular equation sigma of i is 2 by root 3 times y. Okay. This is plane strain, no? in bending also we derive this equation. In bending also, assuming it has a plane strain process, we derive this equation sigma of i is nothing but 2 by square root of 3 into y. So, now in the same way like what we have done uh, in the Tesca yield function, you can substitute uh, sigma of phi in place of 2 by square root of 3 into y. Okay. So, here you can see 2 by square root of 3 into y if you put and then you calculate it, you will find out some eta value and uh, you will get, you will see that uh, we obtain a greater LDR as compared to Tesca. Okay. So, I have not worked out here, but you can just check it, we obtain a greater LDR. Okay. LDR would be slightly larger when you use 1 minus yield function for the same material as compared to Tresca. Now, when it comes to anisotropic yield function, okay, that means or greater than 1 case, which is the best case we have. Or is equal to 1 indicates stronger in through thickness direction and the main effect would be to strengthen the cup wall. Okay. So, if the cup wall, okay, you are going like this, no? this is your axis, this is your sheet. So, cup wall you are speaking about is this. Okay, this is a cup wall region and the wall region is actually stronger. Wall region is actually stronger. Why? Because the thickness through thickness direction strength is going to be larger than the plane if you take R greater than 1, which means that LDR would be greater in this case as higher stresses are required to cause yielding in the sheet. So, LDR would be much larger if you use an anisotropic yield function for R greater than 1 material. So, in these two cases does not matter actually R is equal to, you know, R is equal to 1. In both the cases, Tesca and uh, Ward Mises, it's for isotropic material. No? So, if R greater than one in this case is picked, then LDR would be larger. Why? Because uh, there will be uh, the material will be stronger in the thickness direction. So, along with that, we should also note that along with strain hardening, cup wall strengthening is also important in influencing LDR. Okay. So, though we say that uh, your strain hardening is an important thing, okay, when we discuss about uh, flange getting converted into a cup wall during deep drawing. In that analysis, we consider strain hardening separately. That is why we made sigma f converted into sigma f average. Right. But the point is along with that cup wall strengthening is also this strengthening. The strengthening is also important in determining the LDR. Okay. So, the effect of anisotropy, uh, sheet anisotropy if you want to study, then we have to depend on the choice of yield function. Okay. Tesca or 1 minus or uh, any anisotropic yield locus for r greater than 1 indicates that if you have anisotropic sheet and if r is greater than 1, then somehow if you bring that anisotropy into the model, then LDR prediction would be accurate. LDR would be greater, we say, as compared to the other two. Okay, when compared to one mises and Tesca. And one mises if you compare with Tesca, it is a, we obtain a greater LDR as compared to Tesca. That is the way it is. So, if you want to study the uh, change in thickness of the sheet, okay, that is also possible. So, uh, this is just a brief uh, note here. When the sheet is bent and unbent under tension, okay, when the sheet is bent and unbent under tension, which is what is going to happen in your cup drawing, okay, which is what is happening in the cup drawing. Right? So, in bending we have seen two cases, one is only moment and other one is stretching with, uh, you know, with moment, moment with stretching. right? So, bending with stretching we have seen, but in this case actually there is no other choice, there is only under tension only because the sheet is gripped. Okay. So, because of this bending and unbending, there will be reduction in thickness and that is given by this particular equation which we have not derived. This is for our understanding only del t by t would be equal to minus 1 by 2 rho by t into t by t y, where del t is nothing but your change in thickness and all other uh, you know terms are known to us. Rho by t is nothing but your bend ratio which you already introduced, t is your uh, tension and t y is the yield tension which we introduced in the 
bending chapter. You will see that in the, from this equation, a small bend ratio rho by t will increase the thickness reduction and that is going to reduce the road carrying capacity of the die wall and it is going to reduce the LDR. Okay, from this relationship, we can find one important relationship from this equation, we can find one important relationship between bend ratio and del T. Del T is connected to LDR, that is the way we are connecting. How is the relationship? For a small bend ratio, okay, that is in the denominator, let us say, it will increase thickness reduction because in the numerator, by reducing the load carrying capacity okay, of the die wall and it reduces the LDR further. So, if load carrying capacity of the die wall is reduced, which you have seen in this particular diagram, your LDR will reduce. Okay. So, it is appropriate in a way to tell that the largest blank that can be drawn is a 2.72, if that is the case, okay, it is an extreme case, but it will be less than 2.72, generally it is between 2 to 2.2, which is what I told, you take eta value of 0 0.2 to 0 0.7 in that equation to get LDR, that is the best option we have, eta value we see discussed now. Is eta. Okay, just to summarize, to have a better LDR, we need to follow this particular, you know, uh, thumb rule. Okay, so uh, if you want to have an improvement in LDR, then R greater than one is preferred. Okay, that means anisotropy of the sheet is existing means you have to consider that anisotropy. Okay, if we have R greater than one, then LDR would be better, and rho by t has to be larger. If flow by t is larger, delta t would be less, delta t would be less means uh, you will have a better LDR okay? and mu has to come down and your coefficient of friction has to come down. That means you have to put appropriate lubrication you know, to improve the LDR. So, these are some of the important thumb rules we can get. Okay? So, we stop here, we will discuss it further. Mm -hmm.